Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, the current second largest commercially available jigsaw puzzle in the world from Graphica. Yes, stay tuned till the end of the video when I will be discussing the newly released 60,000 piece jigsaw puzzle from Dowdle. But for now, we are going to be doing the last library section. If you haven't seen the other videos that I've released in this series, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you at least watch the unboxing. Today, I'm excited and sad that we have the last library bookshelf section to work on. I'm excited because I can't wait to put all four sections out together and display them, which we haven't done yet. But I'm sad because that means then they'll be done. So beautiful. This one has a lot less trinkets, doesn't have one of those big ornate chairs. I think it might take relatively the same amount of time, 10 to 12 hours to do. Not that I'll be rushing. I do enjoy sorting. I'm going to sort by section. I'm going to try to see if I can and then build each section. It'll be kind of fun. Yes, I'll leave all the browns till the end, but as I've noticed before, the browns aren't that difficult because there's a lot of shading and lines, and if you just take the time to look at them, it's not too bad. If we pull out our panoramic view of the entirety of the jigsaw puzzle here, you'll see that, yes, at the end of this video, what we're going to see are these four bookshelf sections right there done. We've completed 12 sections all from the start of the puzzle. So this one, that's why it's bagged 16 and it is section 18. Oh my goodness. So during this voiceover, I'll be answering the remaining of your questions that you submitted. And those are on more of a personal note. And you'll finally find out, am I American? Yes or no? Some of you already know. But yeah, so that'll be fun. Of course, you can always mute me and just fast forward through that. But definitely come back to the end of the video when we discuss that beautiful, what a wonderful world jigsaw puzzle. So without further ado and for the love of puzzles, let's get working on bag 16, which is section 18, the last bookshelf section that we have to build as we travel around art. The first set of questions are all similar and they come from Petit Fogger 36, Nicole and Alice. You live in New Zealand but have an American accent. Can we hear your story? Were you born in New Zealand? Is New Zealand the only country you have lived in? Are you originally from the United States? Is your husband from New Zealand? If not, how did you end up there? I like to say that I have a North American accent because I was actually born in Canada. And I have lived in multiple provinces, which is probably why I don't have a stereotypical Canadian accent. I did later on move to the United States and I lived there for a few years where I met my husband. So my husband is American and together we moved to New Zealand. We wanted basically a change of pace, a change of scenery. I thought we were just going to relocate within the United States, but he found a job offer in New Zealand and he really, really wanted to come. So he promised me that if I wasn't happy here, that we would come back, I'd give it a year to see how it went. And within a few months, we were applying for permanent residency. I love it here so much. So we both have New Zealand citizenship now. I say that I'm a Maple Kiwi and I say that he's an Kiwi. The next question is from Dave. This is the third video in this series where you are attired in Olympic apparel. Are you or your husband Olympians for New Zealand? I wish. <laughs> no, no, we, during the Olympics, um, we went to Auckland and they had this big like event display going on to support the New Zealand Olympic teams and there was a lovely gift shop with tons of clothing and I just love a good zip up hoodie and I also have a long sleeve t-shirt with a hood and I'm sorry that my clothing is a bit repetitive or boring. I swear I wash them and I do have other clothing um, <laughs> but yeah I just really love wearing them. Harold the fellow human asks, what do you miss the most about Canada? That's an easy easy answer. Friends and family. Samantha Care asks, I'd love to know what the biggest differences or strangest, funniest differences you've noticed between New Zealand and your home country. Now, besides the weather, because the weather is very different, here it's, it's just kind of easy. 
It never gets too hot or too cold, whereas in Canada, I've lived through extreme winters and extreme summers. But the funniest and strangest thing is the language, even though we both speak English. Um, just the dialect and the terms, you know, learning English again, but same words, different meaning. We went to a store and we were looking to buy a bookshelf and they didn't have any at the back, but she was going to sell us the floor model. And she said, yeah, it's in, it's in pretty good nick. And I said, what, it, it has a pretty good nick on it? I don't want to buy it if it has a pretty good nick. She's like, no, it's in pretty good nick. And I'm like, I have no idea what that means. And it means it's in pretty good condition. So just learning the, the <laughs> it's funny to say the language because there's Tereo Maori here, but just learning the English language terms that they use, it's kind of funny when you think you're both speaking the same language, but you're not. Another question from Nicole, do you speak other languages apart from English? I do. The first language I spoke was English, but the first language I read and wrote was French. So, oui, je parle en français. I don't get to speak it a lot anymore, unfortunately, but half of my family are French Canadian, the other half are English Canadian, and I can speak a bit of Spanish. Yo hablo un poco español. I studied that in university. I wish I knew more Spanish. I'm better at reading it than I am speaking it and conversing in it. I know now, living in New Zealand, quite a few te reo Māori words. I'm not very good at the pronunciation. I would like to take an in-person class to actually learn the language a lot more. That would be amazing. And I do know the odd, like, please, thank you, hello, goodbye, yes, no, and, and many other languages just picked up over the years. Samantha Kerr and Jen the Canadian Duchy both asked similar questions. Can you tell us about any other hobbies you have outside of doing puzzles? Do you have any other hobbies? Now, I will admit I do spend most of my free time puzzling these days, but I love yarn thread hobbies, so I love to crochet. I used to knit, not so much anymore, because I picked up crochet and I love it so much more. Board games, card games, love board games and card games, but I tend to be a creature of had a bit. I'll play the same board or card game over and over and over again. So the next set of questions from Petit Fogger 36 and Jennifer LL. What kind of dogs do you have and what are their personalities? Where, how your dogs came into your life? So Odin, eight years old, male. The vet believes he's an American Staffy Lab Cross. Thora, female. Um, five years old, the vet believes she might be a Staffy Whippet Cross, Staffordshire Bull Terrier Whippet Cross. We're not sure of their breeds exactly because they're both pound rescues. Very different personalities. Odin had a lot, a lot of work that needed to be done just from anxiety, nerves, being scared, uh, you know, the abuse that he was subjected to in his early days, unfortunately. And he's come so far. He is such an amazing dog now. He, I just, when I think of those first few months we had him and the things we had to work on and now how he's grown and developed, it's amazing. He is a lovely, pleasant dog now. Thora being so young really didn't have too many issues. She was a bit food aggressive. That was the only thing. But now she is spoiled rotten and sassy pants and she rules the house. They are very different personalities. I love them both. Puzzle M asks or says, I've always been very impressed with your wonderful speaking voice and screen presence. Aw, that's so sweet. Especially since you have just recently started making videos. You also do an excellent job explaining your thoughts. Do you have a career or past experience that contributed to this? So, well, first of all, thank you so much. That is so sweet. Right out of university after my master's, my first professional career job was in customer support where I traveled quite extensively around the world installing hardware and training on software for aerial surveying, basically on digital and film cameras that are on aircraft. Because I traveled a lot and dealt with people where English may not be their first language, really had to learn how to communicate clearly and thoroughly with people, as well 
while I was in university, I was a teaching assistant and I did teach tutorials and classes and whatnot, so that was good. I do realize sometimes after I watch the videos, I prep, I make myself notes and whatnot, but then I tend to, I get frustrated if I use like the word now a lot, or I start a sentence with now, blah, 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 or I if I use so a lot, blah, 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 but I don't want my videos to be too scripted either. I want them to feel natural and if that's how I speak, it's how I speak. The next person has told me I probably will mispronounce their name and I probably will and I've practiced as best as I could so let's see if I can say it. Conceição Simões? I apologize if that is terrible. I tried to use Google Translate to, to help me pronounce it. Why do you say goodbye at the end of your videos as ciao? It's not common in English, but here in Brazil, so they're from Brazil, um, we use it a lot. The reason why kind of relates to my previous answer. Traveling all over, I spent a lot of time in Italy and in Spain, and I picked up ciao. It just became a universal term for see you later, bye, and it stuck. And for years, I even signed my emails, ciao for now, ciao for now. And so it's just become a salutation for me. And the last question is from Amy. What advice would you have for someone who wants to start a YouTube channel? Do you have a background in video editing or did you learn on your own? I do not have a background in video editing. I did learn on my own using YouTube videos and just tinkering with the software and recording and editing and playing around. My videos are not flash, I realize that, and I know things like my lighting is off. I'm trying, um, I'm getting there slowly but surely. What advice? Now that could be a whole voiceover for a video on its own. It's tough. So it's not so much advice, it's questions you need to ask yourself. One, why do you want to start a YouTube channel? Just for fun? or do you actually want to try to make a career out of it? Because I think a lot of people think they can quickly get rich on YouTube, and a few people have, yes, but I don't think that's really what happens for everyone. What type of channel do you want to do? Do you have a specific subject matter you want to address? And even if you start doing something and then you're not happy, it's okay to change it. But like, for example, I'm doing my jigsaw puzzles, which are a hobby and I love. Be careful that your hobby that you love doesn't turn into a job that then becomes frustrating or tiresome. So you need to set boundaries around things. Are you doing this for fun or are you doing this for a career? How much time are you willing to put into it? How much money? I mean, like I realize I need probably better lighting. How much more money should I spend on lighting? I need to buy puzzles. You know, I got a camera. So those are all things. I've been very lucky with my channel that I basically do not get any negative comments. That is something you may have to deal with. And trolls are this trolls. They'll be there. They'll just say whatever just to be mean. Delete those comments. Just get rid of them. Don't even address them. Don't even reply. If they don't like your content, move along. Like, you don't need to be here. Um, yeah, it's just, I tend to dwell on the negative. So I've been very oh, fortunate to have so many wonderful viewers like you and everybody else that have just been supportive and encouraging. And that means a lot. It's, it's tough. It's not an easy thing to start a YouTube channel. But I'm... I'm really enjoying it. I'm pleased. I'm glad that I've done it. I did just recently get a new computer and I got, what is it called? Final Cut Pro. So now I'm like, oh, should I, I need to spend more time to learn a new software. Should I make my videos more flashy? And ah, I tend to keep things more on the simple, more concentrating right on the puzzles. So for my advice, I'd be keep it simple. But even keeping it simple, you still need to spend time and money on, on producing a video. However, plenty of people just take their phone, record, and it's a great video and it gets lots of views. So the other thing is don't be upset if you don't get any views or you could totally blow up. And yes, uh, thumbnails that are, you know, clickbaity or whatnot get a lot more views and titles that are clickbaity get a lot more views, but I just can't bring myself to do that. That's me. Um, 
but you quickly learn things like that, having a YouTube channel, what works and what doesn't work. I'm not sure if there's a lot of advice there or questions or comments, but hopefully that helped. And the bookshelf sections are all done. Ah, I don't know what to think. I, I absolutely love them. I'm sad that it's done. Did you enjoy seeing all four of them laid out together? I did. Absolutely beautiful. It was another easy section. It only took me 11 hours and three minutes to build. And now I only have 11 bags to go. Wow, like this is gonna be done before I know it. I know, I know what you're here for. You wanna know what's going on. So. A few weeks ago, it was brought to my attention that Dowdle, I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly, is coming out with a 60,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. I contacted Dowdle because I wanted a bit more information. So the puzzle's called What a Wonderful World, and it's a big map. And from what I can tell from the images, it looks like in the ocean water areas, they have like monuments and buildings, things symbolic of the areas around the map so perhaps maybe around australia they'd have like the sydney opera house you know in, in the design around it it is quite large i think in american terms it's like eight feet by 29 feet um sorry i didn't have time to convert that in meters but i think it's slightly taller and slightly longer than the travel around art from graphica so I reached out to Doddle. At that time on their website, you could pre-order it. And I asked them when they were expecting to start shipping. And they said they were gonna start shipping, they believed late October to mid-November. Now I just checked their website and at the time of filming, you can no longer pre-order the jigsaw puzzle from them. It says coming soon. So perhaps they've stopped the pre-orders to fulfill them ship and deliver them and hopefully I'm assuming they would then open up the website for more orders. Now in talking to them they knew I was in New Zealand and this this is what I love from customer service. Instead of them pushing to try to get me to buy it right away they came back and they said look you're in New Zealand it's going to be available at Costco's for purchase and there's Costco's in Australia and New Zealand Perhaps they will have it in stock. You may want to reach out to them in order to save money on shipping. How nice is that? So I asked them when they thought that Costco would have them in stock. They weren't sure, but they were hoping for the holidays. So I did not pre-order it because it is $800 US, plus it would be another 300 US dollars for shipping. And at today's exchange rate, I just looked it up, 1100 US dollars would be just shy of 2000 New Zealand dollars. It would be like 1965. Now, we're lucky in New Zealand in the sense that when we ship and buy stuff and import stuff, if it's under a thousand dollars New Zealand, we don't have to pay extra duties and taxes. I would have to pay an extra 15% on this, which would bring it up roughly to $2,260, so $2,260 New Zealand if I would have pre-ordered it. So I decided against pre-ordering it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until hopefully they come to Costco New Zealand or Australia. I've already contacted Costco New Zealand. I haven't heard back from them, but it's still early days because they don't. I know they don't have it in stock yet. I will wait to see how much it costs. It may actually be cheaper for me to fly to Auckland, buy the jigsaw puzzle and get a Costco membership, pack it in the probably Graphica suitcase, multiple suitcases, pay for extra suitcases and bring it back. That could actually end up being cheaper than if I would have pre-ordered it. It's a beautiful jigsaw puzzle. Bright colors, not too much empty space, very different from the travel around art. I know there's some people that are gonna love it and other people it won't be to their taste. I love anything to do with a map. And it reminds me very much of I was considering to do the Educa um, around the world where it has lots of monuments and whatnot. It feels, you know, reminiscent, similar to that. So I have not pre-ordered it. I'm keeping an eye open. I will see if it comes to Costco and it could potentially be 
in the near future something that I do acquire. But just so you know, I, have, I don't have it coming on the way right now. I did though, because I'm a sneaky little cheeky monkey, contact Graphica. And I said, hey Graphica, did you see Dowdle? 60,000 pieces? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They said, yes, yes, lovely, beautiful, big, gorgeous, love it. I said, so are you guys working on another large jigsaw puzzle by any chance? And they said, actually we are, but it won't be available for at least six months, potentially a year. So that's quite a ways off. I thought, okay, okay, I definitely have time to do another large project. I thought, hmm, would you be willing to tell me if it's going to be larger than 60,000 pieces? And they replied and they said, no, sorry, we can't reveal that winky face. And I was like, ah, <laughs> so I know Graphica is working on another large jigsaw puzzle, which I figure they would be because they've had such success with their last two large ones. I love the Daldo one. There's other ones from Educa out there. There's Kodak, there's Disney Ravensburger ones. There's so many. I do want to do another big, large series. Just let's just finish enjoying this travel around art that we love so much. It'll be done before we know it. So I'm still, you know, plans are in the works and there's tons of jigsaw puzzles out there that I'd love to do. Thousand piece, 500 piece, 1500 piece. It's not like I'm short of jigsaw puzzles, but what I need to know from you is one, did anyone pre-order it from Dowdle, the What a Wonderful World? Um, two, is it the type of jigsaw puzzle you would like to even see me do a series on, yes or no? Would you pay 800 US dollars for a 60,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. I think per unit, like a, if you divide it by 60, so it comes in 60 bags of 1,000 pieces, which is very manageable. Because what you have to realize, a project this big, you, you can't just store it in the corner kind of thing. It takes up room and space and time. And so the issue right now is just that the American dollar is really, really strong. If it would be closer to the New Zealand dollar, it wouldn't be so bad. It's just, it's really high at the moment. But yeah, leave your comments below. Let me know, did you pre-order it? Would you get it? And if you're in uh, Auckland or over in Australia and you have a Costco membership, uh, be my little eyes and ears. Let me know if it ends up in store and what pricing it is at. I'd love that. But oh, I just want to thank Mathieu Maltin for designing such a lovely bookshelf section for Graphica and for Graphica for, you know, engaging him to do so. Absolutely love it. And I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all your questions for the voiceover. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned a little bit about me and about the dogs and whatnot. Ah, oh, again, for the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao.